Good morning, friends, and welcome to the pre-market view. We've seen good strength in the U.S. markets. They were up about one to almost about 1.2 percent on the back of uh, strength in some of the technology names and uh, the financial institutions, where there was a lot of buying interest in the banking stocks in particular. And uh, also, we have seen that uh, the U.S. dollar has appreciated against most of the other currencies, beat euro, which is at about 1.29, and the yen again is at about 102 dollars, and uh, that is reflected in the weak uh, uh, buying interest for uh, crude and gold, which were down about almost a percent. Uh, talking about the European markets, friends, they were also up anywhere from 0.5 to almost about 1 percent. And when we look at the Asian markets today morning, uh, Japan is running away uh, with a 2 percent kind of a, uh, uptick. And uh, we've seen that yen has come down to almost about 102. And most of the other markets are also about uh, up uh, 0.5 to almost about 0.75 percent. Uh, talking about the flows, friends, uh, FI is a net bias in the cash market to the tune of what 421 crore. The domestic institutions are sellers in the cash market to the tune of about 413 crore. And in the index futures, there was buying by FIs to the tune of about 313 odd crore. Our markets, after the sharp cut day before, managed to uh, regain some ground. But despite the fact that the WPI inflation was much lower at about 4.89 versus expectations of 5.45, the market was not showing uh, that kind of a strength because probably there is an expectation that these numbers get revised uh, after initially uh, you know they are uh, announced at a lower level we've seen that happen in the past two occasions so that was a bit of a, a dampener but uh, overall uh, volumes also have been on a lower side for the past two days uh, which means that uh, there is a lack of buying interest at this point of time and this is happening despite the fact that the global markets uh, continue to remain quite strong and even the 10-year bond yields have come down to almost about 7.47 which is quite uh, positive in a way. On that note, let me invite uh, Shaival to take us through important FNO queues, uh, data and strategies that we can have in the FNO markets. Good morning friends. Let's have a view at derivatives. Friends, from past couple of trading sessions, we have been seeing that the markets have been witnessing a huge intraday whipshaws but market overall uh, ends on a flattish note by the day end. Now, after, after Friday's fall, what we have seen is that in yesterday's trade, Nifty has traded broadly in a range of, say, around 50 to 60 points. And now, we have seen that some short positions have been built up by the market participants in yesterday's trade. But interestingly, since Saturday's special trading session, we have not seen any drastic or major addition or reduction from the FIs in the futures and options segment. Talking about the implied volatility, we have seen that it has remained almost flattish to negative. And on the option front, uh, as we are trading at 6,000, immediate strike on the put side, which is 5,900, has seen a good activity after 5,800 put option. And uh, 6,000 call option as well as put option has witnessed a good activity, uh, followed by 6,300 and 6,400 level. I know 6,300 is bit out of the money. But yes, friends, 6050 is our weekly VWAP level and we have seen that markets were unable to surpass this level in yesterday's trade in spite of a bounce. Now, if market manages to close above this level, then we would review our bias and then we may see a momentum carrying on on the higher side. But until then, our bias remains negative. From intraday perspective, Ultratech cement is looking positive, so one can go long with stop loss of 1951.60 and one can go short on FRL, that is Future Retail Limited, with stop loss of 151 rupees 25 paisa. Thank you. Here are the important news and events that we are tracking today. First of all, the companies which will be announcing numbers, United Spirits, we are looking at a net profit of about 70.6 crore. In case of Jammu and Kashmir Bank, uh, we are looking at a net profit of almost about 281 crore. And in case of Karnataka Bank, the PAT is about uh, likely to be 88.2 crore. And IRB infrastructure, the expected uh, net profit is about 139 crore. In an important development, the Reserve Bank of India has eased the overseas borrowing norms to allow companies to raise uh, funds at a cheaper rate for infrastructure projects. And RBI has also extended the relaxation for the affordable housing which was already there for one year the time frame has been extended by another two years and uh, even for aviation the extension has been given for few months since most of the important bills have not been uh, 
passed in the current session of the parliament due to the uh, chaos uh, there. Uh, the government is looking at uh, calling for a special session of parliament and uh, if that does not happen then they are also looking at the possibility of uh, coming out with an ordinance uh, to pass these bills. So uh, we will have to watch out for the development on this front. ITC is looking at uh, foraying into the oral care segment and uh, uh, probably that was the reason why we saw some amount of weakness in the stock for the past uh, couple of days and the section of the market also believes that uh, there could be some kind of a disappointment on the margin front when they announce their numbers. So ITC is a stock that uh, we shall be watching out for. And uh, beverage company Soam Distilleries is looking at uh, getting investment of almost about 164 crore from a European company for the expansion of the capacity in the distillery segment. Hero Motor Corp is looking at uh, tying up with a company uh, in Central America to sell uh, their two wheelers and uh, the trade deficit number has uh, come as a major negative surprise and the government is looking at uh, increasing the gold uh, uh, import duty to 8% from 6%. The RBI is looking at doing that. So uh, that could be a bit negative for some of the companies like Titan and few jewelry companies and uh, also the coal ministry. Uh, has issued show cause notice uh, for non-development of the coal uh, block allotted to companies like JSPL, NTPC, Tata Power, Birla, Monetin, Spart, so on and so forth. So there could be some negative reaction on some of these companies because of this development. There is a delay on the part of the uh, government to do a divestment of stake in case of MMTC as the company has not announced their quarterly numbers as yet. So this is something that we shall be watching out for and uh, United Bank of India is looking at raising about 1000 crore through a QIP. Uh, remember friends that the company announced the numbers recently and the numbers were major negative surprise because of the higher NPL and the uh, slippages that we have seen uh, in the company's performance. DLF uh, some positive uh, development as the company has finally managed to uh, get the subscription for its uh, IPP. And the indicative price is about 225. There was a good amount of uh, response there for the IPP that it conducted. So one can go long on DLF with a stop loss of 225 and a target of about 237 to about 242. Oil India has some positive news as the Ministry of Environment and Forest has given a green signal to the company's uh, proposed exploration activities in the block of uh, KGD6. So that's definitely positive for Oil India. One can go long there with a stop loss of 551 and a target of about 579 to about 590. That's it from all of us friends. Have a great trading session and see you tomorrow at the same time.